Chuck Fresh of the PCGYN. This is Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day. So we get a lot of questions from people. What's this Gmail thing? People are switching from Comcast to AT&T to Bright House or whatever. And what they don't tell you when you switch is that you may eventually lose your email address. I know a lot of people have grace periods of up to six months, but eventually they have no... Uh, if you're not paying their bill anymore, then uh, for Bright House, for example, has no uh, interest in keeping your email accounts active because they cost them money to maintain that and store it and uh, troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. So uh, what you want to do if you're going to switch, and a lot of people are switching, a lot of people are going uh, completely cellular now, too. There are so many more options and more in the works. So what you want to do is get yourself an email account that will go with you, that will move from provider to provider. So in the event you do change your provider, you don't have to send a thousand emails out and let your bank know and your friends know and your family know and uh, your workplace know and anybody else for that matter that you've changed your email address because it's quite a pain in the butt and uh, sometimes it takes months for everybody to uh, catch up with you. And email is still uh, pretty important, even though text and Facebook messaging and Vine and all that other silliness is is taking a stronger foothold, you still do need email for some important real life thing. So what you want to do is uh, pick yourself. There's a whole bunch of, of free email services too. A lot of people are still on AOL, which is great. Um, AOL has now become its own company. I don't foresee them disappearing or going anywhere. They may be acquired or something crazy, but it'll probably be acquired by a uh, bigger company, maybe a Google or a Yahoo or an MSN or something. Um, again, that's pure speculation. I don't know that for a fact. But um, what usually happens during an acquisition is they let you keep that email address. Um, several of the companies who have moved through, like the Earthlinks and the uh, I can't, Mindspring, through all their acquisitions, they have still kept those email addresses for the most part. They've changed a few things. Like the Bell South became AT&T, but I understand some people still have those Bell South email addresses, but they could change. But it's a slow and gradual change, and no one forces you to do it immediately. So that's the uh, the bonus here. So what you want to do is get yourself a free email account. Now, again, there's several um, uh, uh, big companies that do it that are very, very good, very reliable. Right now, the big ones are Gmail, Yahoo!, and also the MSN family, which includes live.com and also the Hotmail and a couple other domains, I believe. Gmail work, works cross-platform. It'll work on everything. It'll work on PCs. It'll work on Macs. It'll work on Linux. It'll work on your cell phone, on your Android. You can even use it on your iPhone. So Gmail seems to be the leading. It's our favorite, and it's the one that we've used. So this is how to set yourself up with a Gmail account. It's free. There's no cost. There's no obligation. They do reserve the right. Now, this is a little finicky. I don't know if they're still doing this, but there was a lot of information in the press a couple of years ago that they do not read your emails, but kind of scan through the list of emails, including your subjects and the email body itself in order to send you tar targeted advertising. Now, is there a guy in some chair kind of reading everything in your email? Probably not. It's probably a computer that's picking up keywords and then delivering advertising recommendations based on those keywords that it sees repeating over and over again so is it an invasion of privacy yeah kind of but anything you put on the internet you need to be aware that it is probably not ever going to be private it's recorded somewhere it never disappears and uh if you just keep that mindset and you don't send anything completely personal that you wouldn't want anybody to know or you wouldn't want on the front page of the new york times as they say then uh don't send it via email or text or anything Write a letter, buy some stamps. But this is how to set up the Gmail account if you have nothing to hide and you just send uh, pictures of your cat to your friends and neighbors. So you just go to google.com and then on the upper right, you'll see this thing called Gmail. So just click on that. You can also go to gmail.com. It'll take you to the same place. And it'll ask you to log in first. It'll ask, well, it'll ask you to sign in or you can create an account. And obviously we want to create an account. So we're gonna click on the create an account. And I'm just going to make a bogus one. Now, a lot of people do this. Um, a lot of people I know, a lot of our customers do this. They'll create uh, a real account for their real name for their friends and family. And then they'll create this bogus account where all their junk mail comes to. Every time they need to sign up for a credit card or a shopping list or a contest or something, they'll use uh, this bogus account. And uh, Google doesn't seem to have a policy against that. So while that is in effect, you might as well uh, jump on it and do it. So I'm going to create a bogus account. And I'm going to use the name bogus account. 
And uh, you can choose your username, and which will be your email address, at gmail.com. Another uh, thing about Gmail is it's short. It's five letters. So it, you can type in a lot less letters than going through like a whole big Bob's Candy Store dot com. Of course, if you run a business, people tend to kind of frown upon the Gmails and the Yahoos and Outlooks. They're kind of guessing that if you're a real legitimate business, you're going to have your own domain and they don't seem to mind typing those letters in. But be that as it may, a lot of people still use this anyway. So I'm going to try bogus account and I'm sure somebody has this. And if I tab through, it'll tell me somebody already has this username. So and nobody has that. Bogey account 2015. So if you want to send me an email, send it to bogey account 2015 and I'll never read it. Everything will end up in spam. This is going to be my bogus account. Of course, if you wanted to do something, you can put your full name in there uh, with a date, date of birth, uh, something that's a little more easily identifiable for people that know you. And then you have to pick a password. You really don't ever want to give anybody your email password. Uh, because that's just bad news. Nobody really needs it. Unless it's a really close family member or a really trusted friend or somebody helping with your computer. But never give it to a stranger. Never give it to somebody who calls you online. Um, all the common sense ideas. So you pick a birth date here. I'm going to put my real birthday in here. January 1, 1900. This makes me about 114 years old. And I am an other gender. And you don't have to put a mobile phone in here. The reason that you'd want to, if you do this for your real Gmail account is because in the event that someone else tries to hack into your account or change your password, they can send you a text message verification. Of course, you need a cell phone to do this, um, but it's a really good idea, a nice little security feature that Gmail and most of the other uh, providers put in there too. So again, you don't have to if it's for your bogus account, you don't have to, but um, uh, you should do it if it's for your primary account just to protect yourself. Oh, they also ask for your current email address. If you have a current email address, you don't have to put that in either. However, uh, it's another good security feature where if you do forget your password, which you'd be amazed how many people forget their password, uh, you can uh, reset it using this alternate email account. Now, if you're, you're switching from another email, email account from an AT&T or Comcast or Bright House or whatever, then uh, that account may go away. So you may not want to put that in there. What I've told a lot of people to do is sign up for two free email accounts. Sign up for one Gmail or two Gmail accounts and uh, use the second Gmail account as your backup. Um, if you want to diversify a little bit to make sure that you're not caught in the mess and Gmail goes down for a day and some email accounts do go down, sign up for a Hotmail account or a Yahoo account as your secondary and then put that in here. Of course, you'd have to do that first, but you can always come back and do that later. It gives you the option to set Google as a default homepage, which is a great idea. It's very quick to load. Not a lot of junk, no Flash, not a lot of Java on it. And uh, it, it's still, in my opinion, you still get the best search results from Google. You get the least advertising or the most uh, easily identifiable advertising, whereas Bing and Yahoo, it's kind of difficult to tell which ones are advertising, which ones are organic search results. So um, you can, uh, you have to prove you're not a robot. So you just type this thing in here. It's 728. There's only one number. Fortunately, they've got a lot easier. And you need to agree to the Google Terms of Service and Privacy Policy, which you can read in the uh, luxury and um, privacy of your own toilet reading. So once you do that, you go to the next step. If everything's okay, if your password is legitimate and it works, you, bam, congratulations. You have a new Gmail account. And uh, this is my bogey account, 2015 a Gmail account. Tells you what it is. Good idea to write it down on a piece of paper somewhere along with your password so you know what it is. Then when you continue to Gmail, it'll show you the Gmail interface. And you're going to have three tabs along the top of it. And you can set this up for one big tab if you want to. Um, but what's really <laughs> bogus. It just called me bogus. It gives you a little introduction. It shows you the three tabs. You have a primary account, which is all the email that you're expecting from your friends, relatives, whatever. Your social tab, which is what comes from your Google, YouTube, Facebook accounts, whatever, even uh, dating services end up there. And for all the junk supposedly ends up in the promotions. People are trying to sell you coupons and sell you stuff and convince you to buy things. So, of course, you can make it just one update, one, I mean, one cohesive box with everything in there. That is an option to do that, too. But the three, the uh, separation of the three tabs is not a bad idea. And it tells you you can set this up on your tablet, on your phone, on your smartphone. Um, if you set up an email account on iPhone uh, in the past, up to about a year ago, you had to set up 
with the Gmail application because it didn't integrate correctly with the iPhone's email client. So that's not a problem. It's a free app. Download gmail.com and all your email. Once you set up your password and security stuff, all your email will flow right into there. So, And, of course, you can make phone calls and all kinds of other neat things, too. You can create a calendar uh, inside your Gmail. It's very, very fully packed with features, and it's a, it's, it's a pretty neat account. It also gives you access to YouTube, where you can comment on YouTube's and also YouTube videos and like YouTube videos and even upload your own YouTube videos under this account because Gmail owns YouTube and several other Internet properties, blogger.com and a whole bunch of them. I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can look that up too. And you can also create a theme. Right now, it's just basic black and white, but you can make a beach theme, which is pretty. You got a little beach there. If you like mountains, you can do that, too. And the theme can change on your location. So I'm in Melbourne, Florida, so let's do that. And I should put my zip code in. And, uh, ooh, look at that. I don't know what mountains have to do with Florida, but that's neat. You can also, uh, it's got a real neat tutorial on the bottom as part of its setup. And it goes through some basic stuff on how to use Gmail. Um, I'll show you a couple things before we uh, before we end this video. Um, you can set a profile image, too, and you can get Gmail for mobile. It just tells you how to download the apps. Another thing you can do, you can also bring in your contacts and your mail from your old account. So you'd have to have the information from your old account, whether it's your... Um, uh, 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 typically, it's from your AT&T Bright House or whatever. You type in your information here. It'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to import your... Uh, emails and uh, contacts from your old email account so you don't have to start from scratch. Sometimes it's a good idea to start from scratch. So, um, But in this case, I'm not going to import anything because this is my bogus account, so I really don't care. Now, to create an email, well, to read an email, let's start with there. You just go to the email and click on it. Anywhere on here, it will open the email. And you scroll down. When you're done with it, you can close... Um, all right, a couple things people are getting confused. I'm going to get ahead of myself here. If you want to throw it in the trash, just click the trash icon. It makes the email go away and it ends up in your trash folder. Is it completely deleted? No, not until your trash is emptied after 30 days or if you do it manually. But, um, also, if you click on an email, uh, you can reply to it or forward to it using this little arrow up here, and you tell it what you want to do. And it also gives you a whole bunch of options. You can print it, too. Um, a lot of people didn't know where the print icon. They would go to Internet Explorer and print, but it would print the entire window. You don't want the entire window because it has all the advertising and all the other stuff, and sometimes it doesn't format right and doesn't fit on a page. But there is this little print icon up here. If you click on that print icon, it will format the email and automatically bring up the print dialog without all the other goofy stuff on the page. You pick the printer you want and uh, how many pages you want to print, and it prints it out in something that's cohesive, something that's easy to read. It does open a new window, so to get back to your email account, a new tab, I'm sorry, and you go back to your original tab, you can just close this one, and you're back to your email. When you're done with it, you just close it or delete it or whatever, and you can save it too. Now, the other thing you can do here is you can create a whole bunch of folders. Uh, you, you see the little file folder thing here you click on that and you can make new folders um if i just want to put something in here i'll call it important or you can call it travel or family or whatever you want to do and you can uh learn how to spell too you can um create nested folders too which is really neat so if you have important you could uh create well i have to do the parent first so important would be the parent and then uh oh i can't do that it's reserved system okay so important uh let's add a suffix to me and let's create that so now let's move that now look over on the left hand column here and you can see all the folders um, but important to me if i click on that folder i see the gmail team email that i just put in important to me and they stay there forever until you delete them so uh you, we talked about the three tabs we talked about printing we talked about saving things oh also you can move things too once it's in there it's not in there forever you can always move that out i can move that to promotions if i want to and now I'll go back to my inbox, and now that email is... Ooh, where'd it go? Uh, I don't know why that didn't end up in promotions. That's kind of weird. Also, uh, you can check your spam if something that was deemed to be important. If you have a best friend that sent you an email with his favorite cat picture and say, Hey, man, I swear I sent that to you, and uh, it looks like it went through. It didn't bounce back. You can look in your spam folder and see if there's anything in your spam folder, just like a regular email account. Now, your trash folder kind of hangs out, again, for 30 days. So it's important to remember that you can't store things in your trash or your recycle bin 
and expect them to stay there forever. I'm amazed how many people store things in their recycle bin in their Windows computers and expect them just to be there forever. And then somebody comes along or uh, your computer needs additional space and deletes that file. That is not meant to be a storage file. It's meant to be a trash can. And eventually the trash man's going to come and empty that trash can. So keep that in mind. Anything you put in trash is meant to go away. Um, and then your all mail here. Oh, where did this go? Here it is. And if you ever get lost, too, you can look in your all mail. And uh, that's where this thing, this was supposed to go to the uh, the uh, that folder, which is really weird. But it's here. So look at your all mail. And then if you get lost, or if you're looking for something, you can always do a search. And that's what this search bar is for up top. And you have an expanded search by clicking this little down button. So you can look some from Aunt Martha. You would type her in here. If she's in your contacts, it will pull up every email Aunt Martha ever sent you that you saved that you didn't trash. And you can do some uh, good filtering here, too, and uh, sort it by size. I mean, it's got some pretty powerful features packed into this Gmail account. Another benefit of doing a Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail account is it follows you. You can check your email from any computer in the world that has an Internet browser. You can check it on a cruise in the middle of the ocean. You can check it in an Internet cafe in South Korea. Anywhere where you have an Internet browser, you can log into that Gmail account and keep in touch with the world. Of course, you can do it on your smartphone, too, and your own personal device. But this is really nice. It offers that flexibility where if you're using a program like Outlook or Thunderbird or Outlook Express or Windows Mail, you have to be tied to your own personal computer. So this is nice that you can use someone else's computer. Hey, Bob, can I borrow your computer? I need to check my Gmail. And it's real simple to do. You can... Uh, reply to it, manage your email, just like you're sitting at home. So that's what's nice about having one of these Gmail accounts. And of course, again, if you switch from AT&T to Bright House to Comcast or Verizon to whatever, um, your email account goes with you. You don't have to let everybody know you've changed your provider. That's a quick introduction to Gmail and how to create a Gmail account. Uh, my name is Chuck Fresh. I'm the PCGYN. Please like and subscribe to these videos. That helps pay our bills and... Uh, of course, uh, we want to keep doing this. We're going to try to do a couple of week from here on in to help people answer those questions that are hard to find answers for. Chuck Fresh, PCGYN. Our website is computercareclinic.com. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Yeah.